just wanted to make a video today to talk to you guys about um, two products that uh, I recommend to a lot of people when they're working on their Jeeps, uh, lifting them, making them bigger, going to be running a bigger tire. Uh, this girl here is running a 35. This Jeep has an uh, older lift kit on it. It's a Mopar 4-inch lift. Um, so she brought it to me because her sway bar links were making noise. Um, basically, they were just getting worn out. Let's see here. So those bolts actually walked themselves off. The threads were trashed. Um, she was also, her other complaint, uh, same thing my wife's Jeep, uh, the one we call Maverick, had, where she basically was having bad bump steer issues. Um, and the best thing we, I've found for that, I've installed probably four of them. This will be number five for that is this right here is the uh, Yeti Steer Smarts track bar. I'll do a side by side comparison uh, so you guys can see them side by side as far as the girth of that rod. It just it soaks up the bumps like crazy. Um, the difference in my wife's Jeep, and that's why I've pushed other people towards using it, is immense. Um, the other thing, too, with her worn out sway links, it's time for some uh, disconnects. Um, I've installed many sets of these JKS quick disconnects. You just need to make sure you get the appropriate ones for whatever lift you're running. Um, probably, I think they come in two or two to four and then four to six inch, if I remember right. Um, but they're fully adjustable. Um, that's these here. They have an adjuster here. The one thing I will say about these is make sure I've worked on these, tried to adjust them later on for people, they put more lift on. Make sure you anti-seize these threads before you put that together. One thing I always do, and these pins here, make sure you absolutely use anti-seize on these when you put them together. I've had these come back to me because um, someone installed them and they were loose. So uh, I know they are, there's a nylock on there, but uh, anti-seize, make sure these are good and tight. Problem is this side, there's nothing to really put on there, so you have to put some kind of metal awl or something in this end to get them tightened up. Um, some people don't bother to read the directions too. There's one of those studs that's going to be shorter like this. That one's going to go on the uh, uh, passenger side inside here. Um, that's so there's clearance between these two spots here. So. We'll get this camera flipped around here and um, show you underneath this Jeep, and I'll do a side by side comparison with that stock track bar versus that uh, Steer Smarts track bar. Uh, I think those run around $240, $250. I think worth every penny. Um, we've been running my wife's for about a year now. I've installed, like I say, I think three other ones since then. This will be number five total. Um, so hopefully it takes care of that issue. Uh, obviously, these low profile tires just probably run a little bit heavier. Tire pressure, that's another thing that can cause some of that bump steer. It's just a stiff ride. So, um, Nobody's familiar with these Mopar lifts. they got nice Fox bypass shocks. They're a nice setup. They're quite a bit of money, but um, they are nice. They come with basically what looks like a stock lower control arm, uh, but those are longer on the front. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty good setup. They also do a... Uh, Drag link flip here, the top of the knuckle. So, all right, I'll uh, get this camera flipped around and show you these two side by side, and then I'll do a quick film too after uh, it's all installed. So here is our stock track bar here in black. Our uh, steer smarts here. You can see the girth size difference. I'm um, just kind of roughly figuring with this tape measure. It looks like that's maybe one and an eighth OD, and this here you're looking at one and three quarter. These threads are just massive. Um, these are your clamps, and again, they're just huge. That's your adjuster sleeve. Another huge advantage to this Steer Smarts uh, track bar as well. Once this is all in, you got a left hand and a right hand thread, so this is fully adjustable. So you can fine tune that in uh, once it's in place. So I'll show you that while it's in, how to uh, get that track, get that axle centered. I'll show you how to do that too. It's super easy. I just use a tape measure 
and adjust it. Um, you want to do that with it on the ground. Again, super easy, but here's our side-by-side -side look at uh, these two bars, and you can see the difference. You know, you, you hit bumps and stuff. This thing has a tendency to want to flex with those big tires. This is fine with your maybe 32s, but you get going bigger, 35s, 37s. Um, it's just not enough. All right, here we are with the uh, Steer Smarts track bar is installed. It only takes, I mean, total maybe 20 minutes to get this in. <clears throat> and you really want to fine tune it when it's in, so I'll show you how to do that. So when you put this together, like I say, this side is a left hand thread, this side is a right hand thread, the long side. So, um, just get these started one thread each and then just sit here and turn this center section until you walk down. Generally what I'll do is I'll take the uh, stock track bar and I'll measure from the right side of this eyelet to the right side of this side and that's going to give you your uh, on center measurement. I think this one was 32 and 3 eighths if I remember right. And usually just for a starting point I add a half inch to the steer smarts track bar just for a starting point. So we're close. So I always start by putting this bolt in, put the Jeep on the ground with the tires still on. And you can have someone get in and just slowly move the steering wheel left and right. And that'll line this hole up here. Slip the bolt through with it on the ground. Tighten these up. Your adjusters are still loose. And then uh, you should have equal threads here to here. One or two off is fine. So there's not a lot of thread showing because she has a raised bracket on here for the track bar. That's to put this in line with the drag link flip. So I'm going to go down with this Jeep and I'll show you how to just use a tape measure to get uh, your alignment set for that. You might, after doing this, have to also adjust your steering wheel, which I'll show you how to do that. That's pretty much the same exact process as this here. This is uh, Welcome to Michigan Salty Roads. So I'll make sure this thing's all the way on the ground. That lift just came off. So I already have this one set. Actually, I, I didn't have to adjust this one at all. It worked out really nice. Um, so, tape measure. And simply just find a common place on the tire and on the frame from one side to the other. If you're measuring to your tire, keep note that you have, most mud tires have a long lug and a short lug. So make sure you're at, when you measure from one side to the next, you're doing that consistently. Generally, most lifted Jeeps, you can use this uh, coil bucket. Again, make sure you go to the same spot. So if you measure from the outside of that coil bucket, try to do this with one hand, to that short lug, which you could do the short or long, it doesn't matter as long as it's consistent. I was like at uh, almost five inches. And then I should get the same thing over here. Again, here's our short lug. So I'm gonna go from the coil bucket uh, to the inside. So I'm about an eighth inch difference right now. So you could always just then now, right now, fine tune that by turning that center adjuster, that black's there. Once you get this dialed in, I usually just aim for within an eighth, maybe even a quarter in some cases, but usually an eighth. And then uh, just tighten down those jam nuts. I think those are a 24 millimeter on this. Steer Smarts, they're big and bulky. So that's as simple as that. <clears throat> if you go drive it and your steering wheel is not straight, so your steering wheel might be cocked going down the road. You know, it could be like that, let's say. So you need to straighten that back out. These JKs, if this steering wheel is more than three degrees off this plane here, it'll send your traction control into haywire. 
Uh, you'll have ABS while you get traction control lights on, things like that. So make sure you get that straightened. If you don't want to do this part on your own, you can always just take this to a shop and have an alignment done. So this is pretty much the same thing. This Jeep has a skid plate, so it's kind of hard to see up in there, but this here is your drag link. Your drag link also has an adjuster. These are two 15 millimeters. I usually take and lube up these threads before I try messing with it. But you can loo loosen both these 15 millimeters. And then again, this is a left hand and a right hand thread, so you can just spin this center section to adjust that steering wheel. Generally, I'll have someone be inside the vehicle and I'll start turning that clockwise or counterclockwise and let them tell me if the steering wheel is straightening out in the proper direction. So that's the way you can steer, uh, adjust your steering. A lot of times when you go off roading, you go to go home, and this bar, again, is weak with the big tires. They'll get a little tweak in this bar, and all of a sudden your steering wheel's off while you're trying to go home, and everything's freaking out. So I always, when I go off roading with these uh, JKs, carry a 15 millimeter, and usually I carry a pipe wrench because some of these get pretty stiff over time. When they're new, they can adjust super easy, but um, after years, that gets really stiff, so... Again, spray 15 millimeter, and then you can turn that one or the other to get that steering wheel straightened out. But you don't truly know if that needs adjusted until you really drive the Jeep down the road. So, a couple tips for you. Again, Steer Smarts, it's where it's at. Um, I am not paid or endorsed by them at all. I've talked about trying to get a, uh, I don't know, the okay to sell their products, but I, they want to have like $10,000 in sales, and I just don't know that my shop's big enough to support that with just them. I did install one of their drag links and tie rod bars for a guy too, and that was impressive as well. So that's, uh, that's on the ground. That's a 4-inch Mopar lift with 35s. My garage is small, so... Hard to get the whole thing, but there you go.